Hey guys, we're gonna get this tutorial started. Um, before I start doing any drawing stuff, uh, the program that I'm using and I've always used is GIMP 2.8. You can get that for free on the GIMP.org website. I am sure that Photoshop is better, but this is free, so I'm using this. And I am using a Wacom Bamboo Fun Pen and Touch tablet. If you're wondering, it's about the size of a sheet of printer paper, and I've had that for five years, and it's I I really like it, and it's it's an older model now, of course, but it still works fine for me. And then I'm recording this using Fraps, as you can tell by the little number that keeps changing down here in the corner. So this is the dude we're going to be drawing. This is Denavius, and we're not going to do this pose, it's just f um, the, the, blah, 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 the design, just so, so I can pick colors off of my design and use the same colors as I used to create him. Um, I'm just going to start sketching a pose that I think I like. So I'm just going to start on this canvas. This canvas is 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels, and the background color is RGB 128 gray. And I always use this color for the background because it's an easy number to remember. It's exactly medium gray. Like, the lightness value is 50 out of 100, so it's exactly in the middle. It's a pretty nice color to work on, and I will use the airbrush. I might end up calling this a spray brush because I've thought it was called spray brush for so long. And um, I made a brush dynamic called sketching pencil that I'm going to use. And right up here in this corner, you can see the dynamics of it. If you have a tablet, you can try this out and see if you like it how you make, it's kind of complicated and not intuitive how to make your own brush settings because you can't like create new no it's not that simple of course uh, but you can right click on one and hit duplicate dynamics duplicate dynamics and then you can change it and then name it like if I could highlight it, yes I can name it Bob and then you see now it's saved as a new brush dynamic and you can change it, whatever but you can't change the default ones and you can't like just create new you have to duplicate one and change that yes I want to delete bop alright so I'm using this sketching pencil and I will be sketching in red just a very rough rough sketching is going to look awful and terrible and messy and some parts of it you might not know what's going on but that's okay it's the very roughest sketch and I will probably come back on when I have finished that red sketch it's just gonna be done on one layer for now but when I start neatening it up and uh, it will turn into many many layers because I am a layer hoarder and I love layers so I'll see you in who knows how long
I have finished doing my very rough sketch in red and this is what it looks like. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all this in black on new layers and make like a cleaner sketch that looks much better and I'm going to start out that process by making a layer group and you go to layer at the top and then new layer group and I'm going to name this group sketch all caps and layer groups are really useful because you can manipulate everything that's inside of them all at once so you can like resize the entire everything that's in that one layer group at once you don't have to do like every part individually and as you'll see later on when I start coloring um, the layers inside that group only affect other layers that are in that group and uh, you'll see what I mean later when I actually do that when I start coloring so I'm going to put this sketch layer I just did the red one inside of it and you just drag it in so now you can see the little thumbnail for this layer group looks like just the red sketch now I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer to make it less you know in your face red so now it's very faint so I can outline it and see what I'm doing easier and now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name this head L because I'm going to start out with the head. I always start out with the head. I'm not sure why. I just used to starting out with the head. And the reason why I have an L after head is because this is a sketch so it's like head lines. Not like the actual colored body head. It's just the lines. And I'll have like the body on its own layer. I'll have each of the legs on its own layer. Uh, the main tail on its own layer. Use l I'm going to use lots of layers and um, chances are that this is going to change pose a little bit at least while I'm going over it in black because I'll have like an idea like oh I think this will look better and then I'll do it I don't have a plan when I start sketching so anything is liable to change at any time so I'll go through this and outline it in black or go over the lines I have in black on their own layers and I'll see you back when I finish. Really quick, uh, I just want to show you guys what I'm about to do, explain it. So right now I have this hair that's totally going through my horse and I don't want it to do that. And so I'm going to find this layer called main far 
L and I'm going to put it all the way at the bottom since it's supposed to be behind everything and then I'm going to right click and then hit U and that's the shortcut to duplicate that layer and then I'm going to hit delete to delete everything off of that layer so now I have a layer called main far L copy and I'm going to click on my background get the paintbrush, hold down control click to pick that color go back to the main far L copy layer that I just copied and deleted the paint off of and I'm going to pick this brush and everywhere I don't want that main to show through I'm just going to paint over it in that background color so it creates the illusion that the main is not there even though it's just under this color that's the exact same as the background so I'm just going to go around and paint over so I cannot see this hair but it's still there and the reason why I choose to do this instead of deleting, like just erasing the hair, is because if I move a leg or the body or something, I want that hair to still be there and not be gone completely. So I can just erase the gray on top of the hair and that will show the hair again and it will still look nice because it's not all cut up and redrawn on if I move something. So I'm just gonna. All right. So now, as you can see, the areas that had the mane and hair going through it, and now it looks like it's not there at all. But if I hide this layer, it all shows up again. So, and I'll do this if I have like this leg back here, this hind leg, this little part that shows through the body. I might do that there. It's just some trick I found out. And I was like, that's cool, and it's pretty useful. So, anyway, back to outline. So I have finished doing my nicer sketch 
for this horse. I have added his design from the reference that I had up right there and the jewelry and everything. So now it's time to turn this into a line art. Right now it's a bunch of layers inside of a sketch group, uh, but we're going to fix that right now. So I've done the jewelry and the designs on their own separate layers, so I can hide them and just have the body, the actual horse, just a plain horse there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to keep the actual horse separate from these layers. So I'm going to drag out the jewelry, the design, and the view bay layers from the sketch group just to get them separate. And then I'm going to hide them because they're already on their own layer. They're, you know, they don't need to be manipulated with. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse the sketch group, and then clicking on the background layer, I'm going to go to Layer, New from Visible. And so what this has just done is it's made a copy of whatever was visible on the canvas, which in, th in this in this case is just the horse itself. And then I'm going to click on the sketch layer, the sketch group, and drag it underneath the background to hide it. So now I have the line art all on one layer, but the problem with this is that there's a solid gray background on this layer. So I can't see through it the color under it. So what we're going to do is if you don't remember what color you use for the background, you can go to the paintbrush, uh, hold down control, and click somewhere on the background to pick up that color. And then you can copy this HTML notation. And then we're going to go to Layer, Transparency, and Color to Alpha. And what this does is it'll take out whatever color you put into this box from the background, or from that layer. So it's already in here for me because I use it so much, but you would then highlight this and control V to paste what you copied from your background. Hit OK and then you should see just checkerboard pattern in the background, which means that that area is now transparent. And then click OK. And now you don't see a change because the background in the line art layer is the same as the actual background we have, but now we can go to the background and change the color, and the line art is just the black of the horse. So now we have our line art layer for the actual horse, and I have my other layers, and they're all separate. And the reason why I like to keep them separate is because, you know, when I start coloring, all I care about really is the horse. I don't care about having all this stuff on top just blocking my view of what I'm trying to do. And then later on, I will show these layers and I will do these parts to the picture. But I don't do them right away, so I keep them separate so I can keep them hidden. And I'm just going to rename this uh, visible layer line art. So my sketch group is still alive, but it's under the background, it's hidden. I'll, I won't touch it again, but I like to keep it there just in case something weird happens. So now I'm going to set up this picture for actually starting to color the horse. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a layer called body. Make sure you drag it under the line art layer so that you can be coloring under the line art and not on top of it. And then I'm going to create a layer called, sorry, not a layer, a layer group. So layer, new layer group. And we'll call this horse in all caps. And then I'm going to drag the body layer into the horse layer. And I need to go back and drag my reference out from the sketch group. All right. So now, this is how I'm going to, I do it, I don't know how you guys are used to coloring, but I'm going to use a bunch of layers that are on grain merge mode. And what grain merge mode does is it just merges whatever color that is to the layers below it. And I mentioned earlier in the video that 
layer groups are good because layers will only affect other layers that are in that group and I'm about to show you why that's like what that means why it's true so I'm gonna first start out by changing the color of the background to I guess we'll do purple like a very faded purple and Maybe this color, purple. Oh no, not that color. Crap. Okay, very faded light. That's fine. All right. You just want to make sure you have enough contrast between the horse and the background that you can clearly see where one ends and the other starts. So I'm going to go back to my body layer, and I'm going to take this medium gray color again. Take a normal hard round brush and you've probably seen me do this I'm going to just blob on color all outside the lines and everything just blob it on uh, Fraps is making GIMP lag a little bit oh there we go okay nope alright so I don't care about I don't care about the hair. Um, I just want the body to be completely s gray, and you know it doesn't matter if it goes outside the lines because we're gonna clean this up anyway later. And now I'm going to right click on the body and hit U, which is a shortcut for duplicating that layer. And I'm going to set that layer on grain merge. You don't see a difference here because this color gray, this specific color gray, when is just n like nothing basically. It's completely in the middle, it's completely neutral, so you don't see a difference when you merge this gray color onto anything. So now I'm going to go to my design up here and I'm going to pick this base coat color off of it and I'm going to get my uh, paint fill tool, is it called a fill tool? I don't know if that would be... What are you? Bucket fill tool. And I'm going to go back to the body copy layer and click on it. So now I've just done the very base base color uh, for this horse. And I'm going to rename this layer to body color right now. And what grain merge does, I'll show you right now, is it only merges down to something that's already there. So I'm going to click on the body layer and remember the body layer is just plain gray and we have the color layer merged down on top of it. I'm not going to change the, co the body color layer at all but if I erase from the body layer that's the gray the color also goes away because now there's nothing below it in this layer group to merge to. If I took it out of this layer group and put it on the background then it would merge down to the background but because it's in this layer group it can't affect the background which I have found to be extremely useful since I'm not very neat and I like to go outside the lines. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slap the color down on this guy real quick and then I'll come back when I start when I set up for the shading. I have finished putting on the colors for the base coat, not for any of the designs. I'll do that later. And so now it's time to start actually shading this. The method that I'm using is 
a variation of grayscaling method because as you'll see I'm only going going to be shading using gray and black and white I'm not actually going to be shading with colors I'll be shading on top of the color so the first thing to start this is to right click on the body layer and hit U to duplicate it and then drag it on top of the body color layer and then go to the layer mode and go to grain merge and I'm going to rename this layer body shading so when you start shading you want to think about where is your light source coming from so I'm going to choose to have the light source coming from like sort of this corner down at the horse so more above and behind it than than just straight on so the first step, keeping that light source in mind for me is I'm going to get the airbrush and a faded brush, maybe that one. And then for the brush dynamic, I'm going to use a pencil brush, which is opacity and pressure and size and pressure. And I'm going to roughly highlight where the light is hitting a horse. So we'll be hitting on a neck right here, on the back, stomach a little bit, the hind quarters, on the head it'll be on the cheek and most of the head really. I'm just thinking about where I think this light is going to hit because I'm not using a reference for the shading, I'm just what I think it will look like. So down there, and maybe a little bit there. Alright, so that's, this is my rough idea of what the shading is going to look like. So now I'm going to go back and, using black and a hard round brush, smaller size, I'm going to start doing the shadows. So the shadows are going to be pretty much wherever the highlights aren't. That's probably good. So here I've finished doing the light source sketching and then the shadow sketching. So now I'm going to take out all this extra color and everything from the line art that's outside the line art. That's not the part of the horse. And to do that, I'm going to click on the body layer and then click on the pen tool or ooh, path tool. And then, how you use the pass tool is you click somewhere to start and that makes an anchor point. Then you click somewhere else and it creates a line between them and anchors them together. And then you just cl keep clicking on areas where, kind of where like the direction of the line changes or there's like a joint, like the chest goes into the foreleg. Just, I would click on those places to put anchor points and then when you finish, 
you hold down control and go click on the start point and that'll link everything together and then you can hold down control and drag these lines like this to follow the line art and they make really nice curves that are really pretty basically so you just drag them around and if you put one in the wrong place you can go back and like move it you can do a lot of nice cutting with the pass tool so I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this cutting it out and I'll be back I have finished going around and tracing the outline of the horse with the pastel and so now I'm going to click on the body layer hit selection from path so then you see the marching ants whatever you call them around what you just did with the pastel and then hit control and I and that selects the opposite of what you had selected so it inverts the selection and if you hit delete then it takes away all the extra color and you're left with just a nice pretty outline so now I'm going to go back to the body shading layer and I'm going to just be more detailed now I'm going to really start putting in the features I hardly touched the face I'm going to do the face uh, legs, everything, going to be like the next step in detailing. So I will go and do that and I will come back when I move on to something else.
I have finished doing this next round of shading and so I'm going to move on to something else because I feel like it so right now I'm going to do the eyeball right here and I don't need an entire layer for an eyeball like a layer the entire size of the canvas so I'm just going to click on the background layer and I'm going to get this lasso tool I'm just going to kind of cut around the eye like that and then do control C, control V, control shift N and that will give me a nice little layer the size of the area I just cut out and that's all we need. So I've just dragged this layer under the horse layer group. It's outside the layer group but it's under it and I've deleted that little bit of background color that was on there. So I'm going to go click on the body layer and get out the pin paths tool I mean and hide the horse because I don't need to see it and I'm just going to cut out the shape of the eyeball so we can color under it. So selection from path and then hit delete and now you have that little section gone from the body layer and we can color under it. So back to the layer, I'm going to name it I. And this first layer, there's going to be a couple layers I'm going to use. The first layer is just going to be plain black and then right click on the eye layer, you hit U, delete what was on there. And then this layer, I'm actually going to get the color for the eye from here. And I'm going to go ahead and color in the iris. Remember that horses have elongated, rounded rectangle type pupils. We don't have circles like humans do. So like that. And then if I want it looking in that direction, which I do, let's to rotate it a little bit. that and now I'm going to erase from the edges the iris color to kind of help the illusion that this is actually a 3D picture and not a 2D drawing. Alright, there we go. And then lastly, duplicate that layer and we need some highlights going on. So, I need to redo this part of the video. So I'm just using white to color in some light. And this, keep in mind where you made the light source from your shading the body, because this is going to be in the same, you know, the same light source. So you have to make sure it kind of goes with what's already going on lighting wise and that's good enough for now I'm gonna leave the eye alone for now I might come back to it later but now we're going on to my favorite part which is the hair and first thing I need to do is I need to take that color this color and there we go. 
and since all the hair, well most of the hair is behind the body, I'm going to make, click on the background layer, uh, layer new layer, nope, sorry, layer new layer, and name it main, or just hair actually. And the first step when I do hair is I'm going to kind of messily block in where the color is. So. Gimp is freaking out. Come on now. Come on, Fabs, be nice. I'm just gonna go around. I'm not gonna be real detailed with like the ends or having it all filled in completely. But I do want to get the basic structure, I guess you'd say, in. Like this, just messiness. Alright. That's the first step. Actually. And I'll do the beard layer. Bleh. I'll do the beard later. I just want to do the actual, like, main and tail stuff right now. So I need to, there's, you see these holes in what I've just done, right? I didn't get the color on there fully, 100%, and I need that because now I can make a new layer, here under, and I'm going to use black, and I'm going to fill in what I've just done. Sorry, I had a cough. Um, I'm gonna fill in what I've just done with black and fill in those areas that are that were showing through before. But now, since I'm using black, it's gonna make them look like low lights for the hair, and that's exactly what I want. Maybe increase the flow of the airbrush, make it come out darker. The opacity will be darker. Alright, so like this. Just make sure everything is filled in solidly. Looks pretty good. Alright. So all the areas that have the background showing through are now filled in with black so it looks like low lights which is what I wanted it to look like so now I'm going to go back to the regular hair la layer and I'm going to take this color and now I'm going to pick a smaller brush and be more detailed about the actual like individual strands of the hair So I'm just using, this brush is my pencil brush, which is pressure and opacity and size. And I'm using the airbrush because I like the, the paint brush is kind of too of a solid effect. Like it paints on too like solidly, but the airbrush kind of has that opacity about it. I understand it all what I'm saying. Like, like that's just too dark. This is a paintbrush. That's way too dark. I like how it's not full opacity. Hopefully that made sense. So let's keep 
doing this until I get everything filled in. So I'll see you back when I finish doing all these strands for the tail and everything else. So I'm done with doing the extra strands in the hair to make it look more like hair. And now I'm going to do the highlights and the shadows. So I'm going to make a new layer called Hair 2. 2. Yes. And I'm going to... I'll do the forelock later. I'll show you how you, you do everything on the main. And I'll just do the forelock. Um, you're going to... I'm going to take a white. White and hard round brush on my pencil brush dynamic and set it on about maybe 30 or 40 it's too high it's still too high and maybe 20 make it smaller I don't need to see the line art anymore And I'm just going to go around and keeping my light source in mind, I'm going to do in the lighter sort of individual strands on the hair. So I'm just going to go around like this and I'll do this here. And then for like the tail, I'll zoom out and do longer, just sort of wavy lines. Like this. So I'm just going to go around and do this to all the hair and then on this layer this will be it, just these white strands and then I'll come back and we'll do some other stuff. done with the hair 2 layer and now I'm going to make a new layer where is it new layer called hair 3 and I'm going to do a similar process but I'm oh, let me this so I did okay I'm going to use a similar process and I'm going to use black but more of an extreme black so the black is going to be more on the areas that the light isn't shining on, so keep that in mind when you're doing this. And it's going to give some depth to the hair. So just go around, especially at these roots. Uh, we'll fix this abrupt line later, but it'll be around here. 
and then it'll be a lot on this part of the main because it's being almost completely blocked by the body of all light. So there's going to be a lot here. That's going to take a while. And then, you know, down here on the back side of the tail, far side from the light, will be all in this area. So I'll go around and do that and then come back again. So hair three is now done. I've done I've gone around and done all the, the darker strands. And it's time for another layer. And this is called hair four. And this is gonna be where like the real big areas of light and dark are. This is real really big highlights and shadows. And I'm gonna do this by taking white first and with a bigger with a bigger sized brush, I'm just gonna go around and really do the areas where there's just like a section, a whole section of light color, of light shining on the hair. I hope that made sense. Okay, I'm just being very laggy right now. Come on. So on the tail I'm going to use a, a pretty large brush and so like this area you kind of want to follow in this case the tail kind of waves a bit so you want, you want to follow those waves. So right here will be lighter and then right here will also be lighter as it waves back. So like that and then just some height up here. So the forelock won't have much, maybe just at the very top right here, and then this back section won't have anything. And then also on the same layer, I'm going to switch over and use black, and I'm going to do the low lights. So right here where between the two waves, it's going to be a little bit darker, and then Over here, just any areas you think need to be darker overall, especially this back section. You just do a really big brush and just paint it all black. Like this. Alright. So, uh, hold on. And then to finish this off, what you can also do is you can click on the hair layer and then if you use a faded brush, a dodge burn tool I'm going to use uh, mid-tones, lower down the exposure and then if you hold down control you can make you can burn the hair so that it's darker overall, like the actual hair color is darker and sometimes that's just easier because then you don't have to worry about you know, having random black lines or, you know, shaded black region that's not th on the hair itself. So you can just make the hair itself darker instead of trying to do the layers with painting black on top. I'm going to do that for this back section a lot. So for now the hair is done. I'm not actually done with it, but 
for now we're gonna move along to something else. So uh, our horse does not have any hooves yet so we should probably fix that. So I'm gonna show the line art layer again and on top of the hair I'm gonna make a new layer called hooves and I'm going to take gray, that mid-color gray. This really doesn't matter what color you choose, but I just always use this color, so I'm going to use it again. I'm just going to glob on color on the hoof, and then I'm going to go back and take an eraser tool and erase away all the extra stuff. By the way, Control Z is your friend. As I draw, as I'm drawing, I always have my fingers on Control and Z. That's the undo button, guys. Your friend. All right, so I've just erased ar around. Let's try that again. I've just erased the extra color from around the hooves. And if I look at my design up here, I can see the hooves are black. So I'm going to go ahead and colorize, color colorize and if it load it's thinking thinking very hard come on there we go so how colorize works for me I, I use this a lot I think it's a really great coloring tool hue goes from red through orange yellow green blue purple red again and then you can change the saturation which it makes it the color brighter or if you lower the saturation it turns it to gray lightness darkness so hooves black hooves are very slightly brown so I'm going to have the orange color and then if you lower the saturation it turns it brown and then just lower the lightness to make it look black And that's going to have to be good enough. And hit OK and it colors the layer. Save it before it crashes on me. And then I'm going to take the Dodge Burn tool and I just do this with my mouse. I'm going to take this hard brush and you have to kind of play around with the exposure. I'm going to use uh, the shadow setting play around with how much exposure you need. It's going to be different for every color. So I'm thinking like maybe that much, maybe a little bit more. But that's good enough. And then thinking about my life source again, I'm going to do lines like this and then I'll do lines like this. And then maybe erase. Oh, didn't work. Um, so there you can kind of see it looks like it's not of like a painted hoof it's not all pretty it's very you know it's this is a wild horse right so it has that sort of unkempt look to the hoof if you wanted to have like a nice shiny hoof you could use a, a faded brush like I'll show you on this one you could do a faded brush and Let's go like this. Make it like very nice and smooth light. But I'm doing this. So like this. And like this some more, because why not? Alright. And then this hoof. And we'll come back and fix the shadows after I'm done with this step. And 
Now, if I lower the opacity on this, you can see the line art better. Like this hoof has, you can see part of the frog, the bottom of the hoof, you can see part of the back, you can see the cloven. So, I'm going to take my pen, my tablet, and using black, just wherever, I'm just going to outline, too big, outline what features there are in this hoof. So, this one has the bottom of the hoof, so I'm going to show that like that. That one's just plain. This one down here has part of the back of the hoof showing. Then this one has the cloven front. All right. So now I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to neaten up the shading on these hooves. So first thing I'm going to take the dodge burn tool and use highlights and. with the settings. Alright, so I'm going to shade, hold down control, and that will burn or darken the color to make the highlight more of in one place, more of a specific area that's highlighted. I'll do the bottom of the hoof for this one, and then also the underside. And for this one, this one's so ugly. <laughs> I'll neaten this up over here, and we're gonna have f I'm gonna have feathering covering some of this, so it won't look as bad as it does now. And then for this one, I'll have maybe a little bit right there, like this. So those are so wow. I'm just adding white to make it look like the hoof is like round and not squarular. Squarular is not a word. I use it anyway. Okay. So there's hooves. I'll probably come back and neaten them up because that's crappy. But now we're going to do the feathering that's covering part of the hooves because I suddenly feel like I need to do that. So I'm going to take the paint tool, I'm going to click on the body layer, hold down control, and click to pick that color, that gray color. And then when I start painting these feather, these this hair, the color from the body should be there, and it is. Because we have that green merge layer, remember? So. Oh, not that tiny. There we go. All right. And we'll come back and fix the shading, but for now we just want to get that feature, the hair feature there. So I'll come back when I finish this.
So now I'm going to go ahead and fix the shading on the feathering, make it look like actual hair and not like strange flat things coming off from the leg. So I'm going to take black and white again, just like I did with the body, and just make it look like hair. I'm going to take the airbrush and that with my phone. And I'm going to paint it like this, just make it look like hair. You know, done this before. Similar process to the uh, actual like mane and tail. And then black. You can hide the line art. That might help. Maybe make a smaller brush. Some finer details of the hair finer strands rather. That looks better. That looks more like hair. Not great, but it looks more like hair. Yeah, you get it. You get the idea. So I'll do that for the rest of the three remaining legs, and then move on to something else. So the next thing I feel like doing is going back again and messing with the shading. I now see some areas that are far too light and some areas I really haven't touched. So I'm going to go ahead and fix the shading. So I guess I'll just show you the face a little bit. So I'll take black again and fix my settings. So the mouth is going to be dark, right under the lips should be dark, and this should all be dark. This is one of the areas that's way too light, it has like no shadows on it. So this should all be dark, this should be dark. Kind of, This is pretty much going to be the last I do of shading, so you really want to get into details like the eyelid, this little depression thing, I don't know what it's called, probably should, probably should know what that's called, but I don't, if you want to make it look like, like the wrinkles on the mouth, I like that effect, I just go around and do like, loop-de-loops everywhere, and kind of scribble along this upper lip and lower lip. 
And then if you pick a light color and then you just kind of lighter color than that. So paint on some white, pick that light color, undo the white, and then you can use that light color. Make it look like kind of like a wrinkly mouth. If you want to get really detailed, you can do the little areas where the whiskers are. The little, I don't know what those are called either. These these things, you know what I'm talking about? And then you shade underneath. Oh gosh. Shade underneath them. Like this. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Those things. And then the nose. There's some light right here. We'll see. This should be shaded like this. Let's fix the mouth a little bit. So this will all be the light. It'll be dark underneath. Oops. Dark underneath. Be careful when you're using black on dark color and you're on green merge mode because you turn to being very dark pitch black very quickly. We use too much opacity. Just darken some things. Strange looking nose I have here. Maybe I want to add like a vein going up the face, because why not? Then you shade underneath it. flattened out a little bit. Let's fix the eyelids, eye area. I need some help. Go lower eyelid a little bit. Whatever that thing is called. Just be some shading right here. And a little depression in the head right here. That's going to be shaded. And underneath. Let's see this area. Maybe a little lighter. This all looks very strange right here. Hold on. Always keep your light source in mind. You know where it's coming from. What would be hit by light? What would have shadows on it? So that's some more detail done to the face. Strange looking ear. But I'll go around and do all the details and then we still have the this stuff. Not that. This and this to do. So then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to do this.
I'm done with the next round of detailing, but maybe you can tell there are some areas that I cannot get to be any darker using just the body shading layer. Like, especially on the chest right here and under the barrel. And so I need to make them darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer that's inside the layer group called uh, body shadows. And I'm going to set that layer onto burn mode. And then I can come in with black. And I can make these areas darker, as dark as I want them to. And this still won't go outside the lines, it'll just be inside the lines. Because the burn layer mode also is kind of like green merge where it only affects what's under it and so if there's anything that's not on that original body layer it won't color on it now so now I can really add in the shadows so any coat that you do or any color that you color on that is light like this yellowish gray color then you're going to have to do this burn mode to get the really dark darks to show up. Because you, you can only go so dark on the green merge layer, and then you have to change over and do this burn mode. Done. So now, after, you know, before, and then after, you have all these areas that are much darker and it looks so much better. So I'll probably come back later and like even out the shading a little bit, but for now. I actually want to the br bleh bleh, the part the crest of the neck where the mane is growing out of actually is not this fine straight line. So if you click on the body layer and you get the smudge tool, I'm just gonna use a hard brush. Lower down the spacing if you have bring up the brush's dialog by right clicking run away. Uh, windows, dockable dialogs, and then if you don't have brushes up, you can get the brushes. And then there's this thing called spacing, and spacing is how much space between each print of the brush, like each stamp. So for example, if I have zero spacing, there's gonna be no, there's gonna be no like difference. There's gonna be no obvious change between the stamps. But if I have this much, 156 then there's 156 space between each stamp of the brush. So that's what spacing is. So if you take that down to 1 on the smudge tool, and then you lower the opacity and rate to below 50, you can have this nice smudge effect. If you get a smaller brush, you can make it look like really fine hairs. That are fading into the black of the main. So just make sure that when you smudge it, you smudge it in the direction of those lighter lines we did on the hair 2 layer. Make it really look like it's flowing with the main. And then I'll just leave the back like that. So smudge it out, make it look like hair. See so yeah, how that looks like it's like hair? 
little bit of little bitty hairs are like that. Also, if you need a do fur for any reason, um, this can be a nice like on the underside of the belly if you have like a really furry pony, and you can make like little hair like this, like oh furry pony, yeah, like that. Alright, and then just to finish this off, I'm going to go to the body sh sh bleh, body shading layer. Sorry, I can't speak all of a sudden. And with the pressure opacity brush, it's just opacity and pressure. And I'm going to use my spray brush. And there's this brush that's called Bristles 01. And it's actually a really nice brush to use for hair, to make something look like it's hair. So if I just go like this and then you can kind of make it look like this is also like more of a hair effect and then normally to finish this off I will make a new layer called crust and using white I will just bigger brush so I'll just make it all like paint over top of both the mane and the crest to make it look like it flows together better. I'm gonna add black. Add black. Sorry, it's not showing up very well. Come on. Black. Work with me. There you go. Don't worry if you go like all the way, all the like all over the body and outside the main you can just erase it later. Sometimes I want to bring that color let's see behind. That's not the right layer. can pick the color from the body and then if you set the mode of the airbrush on behind you can do a little bit like this and just again help with that effect that the body mane is like growing body hair is growing into the mane a little bit at the base which is what it really does And then, well, hold on. Come on. All right. And then we can erase any, like all this stuff that's hanging way too far. With a faded brush, you can just erase all this. Don't need it. it should not be there. Oops. Remember, Control Z is your friend. It's a very good friend of yours. And then, that's how you make the crest look like it actually flows into being main. So, I'm done with that, and now I feel like doing... more strands on the hair. So click on the hair layer. Even though I've already whoops, even though I've already gone back and added more strands to the hair, I feel like there should be more smaller strands. Whoops. 
So I'm going to go back to my pencil brush and smaller, smaller. There we go. Increase the flow a little bit and then just kind of paint in more individual strands. We have some weird ones that are just rebels and not flowing quite with the rest of the mane. Also, if you have any gaps that you see in the mane still, you can fill those in right now. Oh gosh. That's looking bad. Especially these ends. Go over these ends with the smaller brush. If you're wondering how to do the effect that the hair is like laying on the ground, you just do these, like, the, the bleh, this shape, and it kind of looks like the hair is like, kind of crumpled on the ground a bit. I think it's pretty, so do a little bit of that. So I'll finish doing this and I'll do the back side of the mane also. It's going around adding these extra strands. Make it look more As you saw, I went ahead and did the forelock. I just did it on the crest layer. I don't really need to make a whole new layer for that since I have that one. So now we're going to do those markings that I have completely ignored until now. But first, I'm going to do this to the background because I think it gives more of like that 3D look. Just make like a little floor to stand on. Hey look, he's standing on the floor. Alright, so I'm going to show the Bumbe, nope, kidding, the design layer 
and this mostly looks okay. I mean, it's pretty sketchy. Um, so I'm going to neaten this up, just like fix all these swirly things that run into each other and strange growths from the side of them. And then I will come back when I'm neating them up and I'll show you how we're going to add this into the shading and make the shading actually work. Let's see what I mean. I'm done cleaning up the design and I'm going to drag the design under the body shading layer but above the body and this creates some pretty strange looking shading. 
because these colors are so dark and we shaded the body for this light yellow gray color. So that's a problem. So we're going to have to fix that. So we're going to make a new layer group inside the other layer group and I'm going to call it design like a spell. Drag that in there. And then on top of this layer, I'm going to create a design shading layer. And I'm going to take this 50 128 gray color and I'm going to color on top of the design. that. Then I'm going to set this layer to grain merge. And so now this layer will only affect the design itself. So I'm just going to use a dodge burn tool. This doesn't have to be like really detailed shading since it's such a small part of the design as a whole. So these areas look too light. So I'm going to darken these a little bit, maybe lighten this area up. The face needs to be lightened, definitely. Right here, shade it here and here. Lighten it over here. Needs to be lightened. Can be darkened. All right. So now we've changed it a little bit, evened out the shading some and it looks a little bit better than it did before. Unless you want to go in and like individually shade each piece, it's not going to look like super fabulous. At least with me it won't. Maybe someone else knows some tricks I don't. So that's a little bit, a little bit better on the shading. Then we also have this serpent thing which I am going to uh, redraw immediately. So I'm going to make a new layer called uh, serpents. Big spell again. And I will redraw this guy, make him look better, and then do the same process as I did with the design. Put it inside that layer group, color over it with gray, and then fix the shading levels on it.
the shading on the designs is messed with and done. And there's a few more things to do. The hair, the hooves, jewelry, and ears and eye need some work. And then we'll be pretty much done. We're almost there. Uh, right now I'm going to do the jewelry. I don't have anything to, anything to say about the jewelry. The jewelry is done, and now I am going to fix the hair. If you look at the little reference design I have, the end of the hair is actually purple, and I didn't do that, so I need to fix that. I'm going to try to click on the hair layer, and... Kit out that purple. Hello, hello, Gimp. There you go. Get out that purple color. And then, if you set the mode of the paintbrush on green merge, in theory, that's blue. Alright, you might have to play the colors a little bit, but. There we go. Alright, this looks purple now. Still a bit blue. <laughs> now that is definitely pink. Alright, that's pretty close. 
so I'm just gonna paint right on the hair layer and with just with this green merge mode so pinkish and so this is one way you can add like color to something that's already there you don't really want to like redo it or draw an extra hair at the end that's in that color you can just grain merge a color onto the existing paint like so and also the forelock which is on the crest layer Alright, that worked. Also on the ends of the hair are these wispy black things. So I'll make a new layer called... It's supposed to say smoke, not snoke. And if I get my paintbrush with a, a norm normal mode and a faded brush, and I go and set this on pencil, I can get that effect. I think this lagging, because I just started Flash for the first time today, so it's going to be laggy for a little bit. do the scars yet. So I'll do the scars and then I'll come back. I will figure out a way to make those scars look better later. 
I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, so next up is his beard. He doesn't have one yet because I forgot about it apparently. So I'll do his beard same way I did the hair. And I'm going to do that right now. Poor guy. now has his beard. Um, he has, he needs to have hair on the end of his ears. Like, a tuft of hair, like a caracal or something. One of those cats. Oh, let's do that right now. Oops, that's ugly. Shading on the inside of this ear doesn't look dark enough to me. Or crisp enough, clearly. looks better. Alright. Actually, his necklaces are awkward. Um, where is your jewelry, man? There it is. Alright. It's going to make it look like it's Resting on the neck and not on the hair, if that makes sense. Yeah, that looks better than it did. Hi, cat. Coney, move, honey. Sorry. There you go. That was my cat. Jumped up on my table. So, I think that. Oh, you know what? I missed some scars. Uh oh. Who got his neck? That's not that bad. Is that one? And then there's this one. He just. Alright. I say I'll write a lot, don't I? I don't know what else to say. And the back color. Oh, that's ugly. That works. Whatever. 
so I don't think I missed anything else um, so to finish this off I'm going to do that hair texture you see me do that lots of people ask about and it's kind of weird to explain so I'm going to go inside the horse group on top of all the shading layers layer new layer, I'm just going to call it hair texture Yes, and then I'm going to use that gray color that special gray color and with I'm just going to blob on paint like we did in the beginning that was a very long time ago wasn't it? holy crap alright, blobbing on color Then we're going to set it to grain merge mode. And then I'm going to use uh, black. Since this is a light colored body, using black will look better than white for the hair. And then there's this brush called Bristles 03, which is kind of conveniently shaped for hair. And I'm going to go, I have a brush set called Random Brush, which is where I have Angle and Random checked. So this will randomly, maybe you can see it, it'll randomly change its angle as I move my brush. And then, uh, spacing in the brushes tab, you have this thing called spacing, and that's the distance between each brush print each stamp of the brush and I'm going to change that to about 30 so that it's spread out more like this and I'm going to just cover everything in black dots paintbrush for this uh, not this the airbrush that I normally use for everything else. Alright. There we go. And now I'm going to take the smudge tool and pick a just a hard rounded brush and lower the opacity and spacing goes down to one lower the opacity and rate and then you should be able to smudge it into something that looks like hair when you're smudging this out uh, keep in mind the direction that the hair is actually going so the neck will be like I mean, I'm not, I don't know exactly every section where the hair goes, what direction the hair goes in, but this looks good enough to me, so that's what I do. I just smudge. I'm just using my mouse, I'm not using my tablet. This is, it's easier to use my mouse for this. Over here, the hair goes like that. Like, whoosh. <laughs> and then over here. hilarious. 
now I'm going to go back and use this color on paintbrush, faded brush, lower the opacity, and on areas where I don't want the hair to show as ba as much, I'm going to get rid of those black dots by covering them up with the gray color again. So over here, like the lower legs especially aren't very hairy. stomach a little bit. Face, definitely. The cheek is probably the only place that would be visibly hairy. Ears is, is not. Everyone, the crest isn't really underneath the neck. And then just everywhere, just to make it not as severe. Look like he has black chicken pox or something. Just sort of soften out the black. So he looks like he has hair. Very furry boy. There we go. Oh, I didn't smudge it out. Smudge. That didn't work at all. Smudge. Smudge. There we go. Alright, so now it looks like he has that hair texture, which I really like the texture a lot, and I use it really often. Maybe you can lower the opacity just on the layer overall. There we go. There we go. That looks better. Alright, let's see. Okay, hide this layer. Um, I'm going to put this stamp on its own layer. Call it bead stamp. Actually, I want the this part for here to be darker, just a little bit darker, maybe with a dark bluish, or purple, dark purple color. go. That's better. I think I dare say that this is finally finished. I mean, I'll probably go back and mess with it a little more, because when is anything ever finished, right? You can always do a little bit more. But this is long overdue, and I'm sorry. I wish... I had finished this a lot sooner, but now I can keep doing my normal videos and you've seen my process and thinking of when I do these. So I hope this is helpful and not too terribly bad.
If you have any questions, please ask them. I will answer them all. As long as they're relevant. If they're like completely random, I'd be like, it's no. But if you have any questions on what I did in the video, uh, if you want to, I'll ask them, link maybe the time at where they happened. I know I jumped around and did different stuff at like random times, but just link me the time and I'll try to explain it better. So, hope you all enjoyed. Hope this helped. And I'll see you guys in the next video.